I'm going to teach you how to use the layers in Illustrator. Unlike Photoshop, the layers in Illustrator have sub-layers. Let me show you what is this about. First, I'm going to open a new document. So I go Illustrator, File, New. This time, I'm going to change my setting to a regular computer paper, 8.5 by 11. So when I go to Size, I can look, go to Letter, which is a preset and already give me the right sizes for it. I'm going to keep using 72 DPI. I could change it to different resolutions if I needed to. You get all that under advanced. So right now I got what? RGB, which is good for screens. It takes less memory at 72 DPI or dots per inch. In this case, PPI points per inch. One artboard, that will be one page. And the orientation is vertical. And the other option will be horizontal or portrait. I'm going to keep it vertical. And here we go. And now I have a document. The first thing I need to do is to find my layers menu. So I can go to window and see they're already out. I'm going to put them away and I'm going to get them again. Window layers. And here's my layers menu. Whoops, I hit it by accident, so I have to take it out again. Layers, and here we go. And here's the Layers tab. And if I take it by the top part of the window right here, I can take them out and hide them. That way you get rid of some clutter in the screen. And you can do that with most menus in Illustrator. You can also put one inside the other. And usually when they do that, they turn blue or you can put them in between. The idea is to simplify your screen. So right now I have one layer, layer one, and I'm gonna draw a basic shape. Here's my shape options, or I can take them out again by just clicking on the little triangle at the bottom of the shape option and pull out the window handle. And I'm gonna draw a rectangle which I'm going to fill by double-clicking here on any color. Let's make it red. Next, I'm going to draw a star with six points on it. To draw a star, I go to the Star tool, and I double-click right away. I'm not going to drag anything. I double-click. Here's the option for the star. I want six points. You can also highlight and type them yourself. And the radius is the distance from radius 1 from the center to the closest part of the star and radius 2 will be the furthest away. This is about a regular shape star. So I go like that, here's my star. I can also get the color area here and click there and change the color there as well. Or I can double click here like I did before. I'm gonna take the black arrow to move it. And if you notice, every time I make a new shape, it will be on top of the previous one. Now I'm going to make a polygon. This one is going to have eight sides, like a stop sign. So I double click, six, seven, eight, and I click. I can resize it by using the black arrow. Go to one of the corners, press down shift like we've done before. That way I keep it uh, the correct size, symmetric, symmetrical. I'm going to make it blue. I'm going to rotate it. And if you notice now, the polygon is on top of the other shapes. Now, when I go to my layers panel, let me go to layers. Window, layers, where did they go? There we go. This is my layer one. The little eyeball tells me that I can see it. If I click the eyeball out, I won't be able to see it anymore. And inside layer one, if I click the little triangle here, I get to see my three sub-layers. And again, I can hit the eyeball and make it disappear as well. Now, there's other options for this layer. One of the options that I can do for the layer is the opacity. How much I get to see of it. I can change the opacity, let's say, at 40%. And... It works better actually if you select a shape. Uh, let's say 40% and 
and there we go. Now they look translucent. I can do 60%, but I maybe I want the star to be darker, so I'm gonna change that opacity of the star to 80%. It's a lot of fun to play with them. Let me get those layers again. Layers show up. I keep hiding underneath the other menu, so I got the sub layers here. Let's say I have these layers the way I want. If I do so, I don't wanna move them, I don't wanna mess them up, I can lock the layer right there. I won't be able to click anymore. Then I'll have to make a new layer. And if you're familiar with Photoshop, you know that you click down here, create new layer, and you go ahead and click. Here's a new layer, which just happens to be on top of the previous one. Now I'm gonna draw a new shape. I'm gonna draw a rounded rectangle. So, and I'm gonna make the color green. We don't have anything green yet, so. And here we go. Now this one lives on top of the other one. You see? And if I use the white arrow, I can select the shape first, then isolate a point by clicking again. This is the only one now that has a full little selection point. You see it's all red, the other one has the white fill and I can click and drag there and play with it if I want to. Now this one happened to be on top. I can actually move the layers below it and now, as you see, it's below it. That's the advantage of using layers. Again, I could click here. I won't be able to select it anymore. Or I, if I unclick it, then I can actually move it and select it again. So these are the basic functions for your layers. Another thing that happens Often is that it's kind of confusing. If you double click by accident, Illustrator sends you into isolation mode. If you notice here, the thing showed up again. If I double click here again, it goes back to normal. The idea of isolation mode is that all the other layers become uh, kind of like invisible. They fade a lot away. And then you can just work in a particular shape without having to worry about clicking the other stuff by accident. You see, I can click this one, but I cannot click this other one because I'm in isolation mode. So sometimes you double click by accident. All you have to do is just double click on a blank space and you're back to normal again. Isolation mode, or you can click the arrow and you're back. You have to click it twice to normal. 